Dear friends and also the new viewers of the Tom Photo channel, I've been an avid Fuji zoom lens user for photography and videography. This is because I really like the creative freedom that the zoom gives me. But now I ran into a situation where this is not enough. You see I had to film in low light and under these conditions the high ISO is creating ugly grain. I needed a faster lens, I needed much larger aperture on my Fuji system. I decided to get a prime lens uh, with focal length of 35mm to give me a normal view on my cropped sensor Fuji camera and f-stop at least 1.8 or better. I considered Fuji but also Nikon system lenses as I already own a cool Nikon adapter for converting f-mount to x-mount. You also have third-party options for x-mount with all the electrical contacts out there like uh, Carl Zeiss or Viltrox. And there are some makers of manual lenses for Fuji like uh, Samyang or uh, Seven Artisans. I did briefly look at Viltrox, but eventually narrowed it down to three options. Fuji FX 35mm f1.4, Fuji XF 33mm 1.4, and Nikar AFS 35mm f1.8 DX. In the end, only the Fuji lenses made it into the second round because they were brighter, better suited for Fuji system, and had metal lens connectors. Of course, they also cost more. The 33mm Fuji lens turned out so expensive that eventually the Fuji XF 35mm f1.4 became my lens. And I really liked what I read about the Fuji 35mm too. It sounded mysterious. like must have more than a lens, unparalleled retro output, so different from other options, a truly unique character. They made it so exciting for me that I bought it. And here it is. It feels sufficiently heavy and trustworthy, certainly has a pro feel to it. It's been in the making for so many years and still going strong. Whenever I get a new lens, I always carefully measure its sweet spot and aperture behavior to understand what I have in my hands. I have previously made a video on how I measure lens sweet spot and the link is below. So I'm going to jump directly to the results. I used my Fuji X-T10 here and photographed three different paintings on the wall and averaged the normalized results. The uh, Y axis here is the image sharpness and the X axis is f-stop. It follows that the lens is less sharp at the smaller f-stop values as expected and jumps uh, to its sharpest behavior at f equals 5.6. After that it remains sharp until f16 all the way. There is a dip at f equals 8 and this is real. It was always there in all of my experiments. I've also seen it with other Fuji lenses. Please see the links below. I put my new lens in front of my Fuji X-T10 and gave it a spin. These are some of the photos of mine all taken at f equals 1.4, the max aperture. I hope you appreciate the wonderful bokeh. My experience so far has been overly positive. I see that the photos have a different feel to them indeed. I do feel the retro touch here. It must have to do with the small differences in geometry and perhaps center to edge sharpness but the images are really sharp where they need to be. Is it me or, or not, but I think this lens renders colors a bit differently than the XF18-55 to at 35mm focal length. Uh, this is a subjective claim, of course. They talk about this lens's slow autofocus. It really is not fast and is rather old school. It's not a problem for me in landscape photography or photographing people who are sitting patiently but I can see how this could limit you in sports photography, for example. So consider this before you buy. Also, they say that the lens motor is too noisy for video. This is indeed true. I think it's the noisiest lens I've seen so far. Almost sounds like it's about to break as it's searching around for the right focus. Listen to yourself. On the other hand, you probably use manual focus for video. However, even when you manually focus, the lens is still making noise as it is still using its motor to do the focusing. 
I get the sounds from a different source in my video, so I don't suffer from this drawback. But I still want to let you know that this may not be the best lens for a quick video using camera's own microphone or even a hot shoe microphone. However, for me the f-stop of 1.4 makes everything else insignificant, because I just need to capture that low light without all the ugly grain. I'm showing you my sample video in the background, this time using my Fuji X-T30 and the lens at f equals 1.4. For me this maximal aperture is mind-blowing. In most situations I intend to use this lens right at 1.4. This is why I got it in the first place. Um, I'm happy with it and I can now go on with my video plans. I'm not yet revealing what it is that I'm working on, but sometime in the future I will post the outcome here for you to take a look. The lens comes with a very nice hood that's rectangular at one end. And the curious feature is that the cap goes on top of the hood. The cap is made of rubber. I kind of like this. You don't have to take off the hood to protect the lens with a cap. Pretty smart. If there's anything to complain about regarding the ergonomics, it would be the short distance between the aperture ring and the base of the lens. This leaves too little room for fingers to get hold of the lens when attaching it to the camera. Also, the top of the lens moves in and out as you turn on and off the camera or when you focus. I'm not a huge fan of that because it seems to make the setup more fragile. For example, when trying to put, put on the hood or hood cap while the lens motor is working. Note that uh, this lens has no image stabilization. It cannot. This would defy the meaning of the prime lens because you don't want to have any movement between the lens parts or else the sharpness would become unpredictable. Without image stabilization you have to rely on using tripod and gimbal even more. I'll soon post videos on the tripod and gimbal that I mostly use. So, I was told the lens was special. I can confirm that it is very special. It might have two significant problems slow autofocus and noisy motor, but it has three things to offer that are simply breathtaking. f-stop 1.4, image sharpness and image character. Do you also think this lens is special? Do you have first-hand experience? If yes, I'd be very interested to read about it in the comments. If you like this video, please also consider pressing the subscribe button. It means a lot to me. I want to thank you so much for checking out the Tom Photo channel and I hope to see you again in my future and past videos where I talk about photography related matters. Have a great day.